Greetings and welcome to worship. I'm Rob Kopp, pastor of Bemidji United Methodist Church. And I'm Michelle Miller. I'm the pastor of Wesley United Methodist in Crookston, the Erskine and Foston United Methodist Churches. We are a clergy couple coming to you uh, on this day from the sanctuary of Wesley United Methodist Church in Crookston, Minnesota. And now let us light our Advent candles for this third Sunday of Advent. The third Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of joy. In the midst of the darker colors of waiting and mystery, as we light again the candles of hope and faith. We come to a moment of cheer as we anticipate the wonder of God coming to dwell among us. In the here and now, we rejoice that God loves each one of us. We light this rose-colored candle, knowing that God's gift to us is joy. May God grant us each the joy of God's love and grace. May we each experience God's unique call. Let us worship with gladness. Let us join our voices in the call to worship. God comes to dwell among us. In flesh like ours. In flesh like our neighbors. In flesh like the creatures and creations of the earth. Made in the image of God, all life and all lives are potential sites of the sacred. Every moment is an opportunity in flesh the holy among us. Where there is beauty and connection, liberation and freedom, practices of care and compassion. The presence of God is among us. Let us join our voices in singing, Come, Thou Long-Expected Jesus. Let us pray. Liberating one, we have been told much about power, that it resides in social status, institutional authority, and access to wealth, that it is synonymous with dominance and thrives off fear. But you call us gently toward a different truth, one born of a manger, a place of vulnerability, where radical love and solidarity are born, May we journey together in the direction of a sacred kind of power, yours, everlasting and enduring, coming to dwell among us. Amen.
the Hebrew scriptures from Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The Lord God's spirit is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release for captives and liberation for prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and a day of vindication for our God, to comfort all who mourn. I surely rejoice in the Lord. My heart is joyful because of my God. Because he has clothed me with clothes of victory, wrapped me in a robe of righteousness, like a bridegroom in a priestly crown, and like a bride adorned in jewelry. As the earth puts out its growth, and as a garden grows its seeds, so the Lord God will grow righteousness and praise before all the nations." And from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. This is John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? John confessed. He didn't deny, but confessed. I'm not the Christ. They asked him then, Who are you? Are you Elijah? John said, I'm not. Are you a prophet? John answered, No. They asked, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied, I'm a voice crying out in the wilderness. Make the Lord's path straight. Just as the prophet Isaiah said, those sent by the Pharisees asked, why do you baptize if you aren't the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered, I baptize with water. Someone greater stands among you whom you don't recognize. He comes after me, but I'm not worthy to untie his sandal straps. This encounter took place across the Jordan in Bethany, where John was baptizing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Who are you? the religious authorities ask John the Baptist. It's significant what his reply is. He says, I'm not the Messiah. Noting John's power and influence, they ask him, are you Elijah? No, he says. Are you the prophet? No, he says. Well, who are you then? We have to report back. What do you have to say for yourself? And John simply says, I'm a voice crying in the wilderness. I'm the one telling everyone, like Isaiah did, to prepare the way for the Lord. God has called me to point people to Jesus, and that's what I am doing. It's refreshing, isn't it, to hear a powerful person like John with a following of his own emphatic that this isn't about him. He has no interest in making it about himself. He is quite clear within himself and plain in what he says, that he is there to bear witness. In our time, as well as back in that time in Jerusalem, it is so common to hear claims of power, claims that are egocentric. But instead of needing to prove his power and his social standing, John proclaims the truth about himself. He is exactly who God has called him to be. He is the voice of one crying in the wilderness. His purpose is to prepare the way for another. He's a person called to point others to Jesus. And we hear deeply within his claim of identity, 
He is enough. You can hear both the conviction and the peace in his voice. I think it is like this for each one of us. Every time we respond to God's call to be ourselves, we will discover that it is enough, that we are enough. There are so many invitations out there in our culture, maybe expectations of our social media, friends to be something more. We start to believe that we are not enough, that we don't have a purpose, that we don't amount to anything. And we try to make ourselves look better, taking much care, for example, to have perfect photos on our social media page, making sure it looks like we are living perfect lives. Maintaining this mindset can be really tiring, can't it? There's even evidence to show that for some, social media is a cause of anxiety or depression. So... This Sunday in Advent is the Sunday of joy. And in this word from John the Baptist, I find a word of joy. When we hear him saying, no, you authorities, I'm not who you want me to be or who you hope I am. I'm just a guy trying to do what I believe God wants me to do. We can breathe a sigh of relief. I hear an invitation to celebrate who God has created and is creating me to be, has created and is creating you to be. You see, you are enough. God accepts you as you are, and so you can accept you too. And God has good work for you to do that doesn't require you to be somebody other than yourself. In fact, God needs you to be yourself. There is a place for you, beloved ones, in the here and now process of preparing the way and pointing to what God is doing. Rob and I have been reading and listening this week about the concept of self-compassion, how basically there is much power in liberation and joy instead of suffering when we begin to learn to treat ourselves with kindness rather than self-criticism. I will continue to learn about this and invite you to, rather than think of yourselves as negatively based on what you think others expect of you or the messages you have internalized about what you should be that you aren't, to instead be kind and compassionate toward yourself and we will see what opens up. I think we do tap into joy when we realize God knows us is delighted in us, has work just suited for who we are in God's kingdom. We don't have to be perfect. It's a come-as-you-are party. There's good work to do making a path and showing the way. There's good work to do bringing good news to the poor, comfort for the grieving, liberation for those who are stuck or oppressed. There is good work to do to show and to tell Jesus' message of grace, of love, of well-being for each person God so loves. Who are you? Uniquely yourself, complete, and gifted to point beyond yourself to God, to what God is doing, what God is birthing into the world, here and now, in you and around you. Let it open up. Beloved ones, go and be who you are, beloved children of God. Let us join together in singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Let us pray. For all of us, for our nation and our world, for acts of love and justice to prevail, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For hearts and minds to steward our gifts toward where God's love and justice are at work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governmental leaders of the world, that they may be wise in their administration of government during this pandemic and selflessly serve the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in our churches, that we may faithfully tend the family of God during this season of social distancing and support our churches by our stewardship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and other health care workers who tend the sick and dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and those in quarantine, that they may find comfort and care in their time of need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who live and work in congregate living situations like prisons and nursing homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth you have given to our care and for all creatures who share it with us, that you may be glorified in all your works, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the other people and concerns that we hold in our hearts, we pray now in a time of silence. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we, your children, never pray alone, but only with all your saints in all the world. Therefore, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This season, we remember to perceive ourselves and one another differently, not through the lens of hierarchies, subtle or explicit, but through the life of God as sites of divine incarnation, always brimming with potential to enflesh love, choose justice, and live transformed lives together. In gratitude for all the power God has given us to reorder our worlds, let us bring our offerings together with thanks.
Let us join our voices in the prayer of dedication. Holy One, we know voices are still crying out in the wilderness today. Beloveds, proclaiming the truth hidden away or forgotten, brave and tender ones, drawing attention to the wisdom our collective world needs. With gratitude, we bring our offerings and pray that our lives and resources would faithfully point to the sources of love that liberates. Amen. Prepare the way, the prophets cry. Tear down the barriers that oppress. Raise up the sources of wisdom that free. Pay attention to the silenced and let the arrogant go unheard. This season invites us to make space within us, around us, and between us for the joy of God to come and dwell. May it be so. Amen. Amen.